Hi, my name is Brenda McLaughlin. I'm a coach at Hatch Coding, and today I'd like to take you through the project Minecraft Grass Block and all of its challenges. The project itself isn't actually that hard. Um, I'm going to break it down all the way to type what you see, just so you can get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. It's got uh, fill, quad, fill, quad, alternating. And the interesting thing to note about fill is that this color fill, you can see that these two quads don't have a fill in between them. That's because fill will change the color for every shape underneath it until another fill appears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, because I'm a coach, I can copy paste this in so you can see that's the first wall of the grass block. At the end, it's going to look like this. We're drawing all of the shapes one by one because you can see that they're all irregular, kind of. They've got their parallelograms or, or just irregular rectangles. So it's not like you can just draw a rectangle and turn it on its side. Um, they all need to be like pointy and angled. I guess this one we could probably do that, but Regardless, uh, we're using quads. Uh, quads are just like rectangles, but you have to type in each coordinate. So if I use my coordinate picker here to show coordinates, um, you can look and see that this is about 35, 100. Well, it's 36, 100. Um, I was off by one pixel, but that would be this coordinate right here. If I change this to be like 10 100 you can see that it's changed now to 10 100. This is where it's good to work at type what you see or pseudocode because then they'll tell you exactly what numbers you're supposed to use. Of course you can always go in with a by yourself with the coordinate picker try and use logic math to try and figure out where the other points might go uh, but it's not going to look as good uh, unless you're really, really good at that kind of thing. So there's no shame at all in just looking at the numbers they've already given. Like, this is a lot of numbers. It's eight of them uh, in pairs for coordinates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy the rest of the code in. The interesting part is going to be doing the challenges. This can be tricky because it's really easy to lose your place. Um, it can be helpful to like put spaces in between your code so you can keep track of it. So you okay, fill quad, fill quad. If I take out this fill, then the fill on line one will fill both this quad and this quad. Same thing if I take out this fill, it'll continue to fill all of the shapes until I put the fills back. So with that, we're all done with the project. So you can submit it, click I'm done, you get your project points. But we still have three challenges to do, so let's look at that. It's automatically opened up the challenges tab for us, but if we uh, are still working on the project, you can flip back and forth between instructions and challenges, the I button and the star button. So these projects will get us 100 points, 200 points, and 300 points respectively based on their star level. First challenge is to draw a background. Now, we could use an image for this, that's later on. For now, I think it's sufficient just to put in a background function just like this make sure you have the letter G background it's like ground that you stand on but it's in the back <laughs> and uh, don't forget about the semicolon so we're gonna fill the background the inside numbers with RGB values if you go to the research manual click on the reference manual you can see a whole bunch of different pages uh, that'll help you uh, understand coding better. So here's one on background. It says we need to put in three or four numbers, the red value, green value, blue value, and the transparency. We don't really want our background to be transparent. It's good enough just to be a solid color. So you can forget about that A for now. Red, green, blue is what we're looking for. Here's some examples of colors that you could make it. Or if you're drawing a person or want to find shades of brown that you can use, obviously this is not every possible skin tone. It's a starting point and you can adjust the numbers to make it more accurate to your vision for what your character looks like. But if we wanted a brown background, these are some options of like neutral tones. Um, I am going to use this light blue here, 176 and 235 for green and blue respectively. So I'm going to say zero. 176 and I can't remember that's from 235 was it let's check 235 yes I have good memory always good to keep yourself sharp so there we go background challenge complete uh, if you want to have a color 
in your project that isn't on this color wheel like if you want a very specific shade or you want like a salmony color it's not here you can google color picker and if you're on chrome it'll pop up with a screen like this if you're not on chrome uh, there's a whole bunch of good resources down there that do the exact same thing you can scroll around look for a color that you really like so maybe you want this pale green and it gives you the rgb values down here but i'm happy with my blue so let's move on second challenge is to draw in a minecraft image what we're going to do is go to the images tab and pick out which image we'd like to add to the minecraft grass block you don't actually have to pick a minecraft image uh is supposed to be on it's like the challenges are on theme uh but if you really 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 wanted this guy to be in minecraft it would count the point is learning how to make images not proving that you know what minecraft is so uh, i think i'm going to put a slime on my grass block just because i can uh, so i can copy the code but you won't be able to so what you can do is just remember that it's minecraft slash slime i'm going to go over here i'm going to make image the last function in my code the image the layers the, 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 the order in which you put down the layers really matters. Like If I put the background here, it's going to cover up everything because it draws the whole uh, grass block and then it puts the background on top. We don't want that. We want it to go at the beginning. So the last thing I'm going to do is going to put my slime on the grass block uh, so that it, I'm sure it shows up. So the way to do that is to type image. This is the function that actually makes images show up. Sometimes you can load in images from the internet and sometimes you can load them in from the image library. When we're doing uh, images from the image library, we need to use the function get image. So image has a couple different parameters, parameters being the instructions you give the code to make it work. It's got like the actual picture. It's got the X location, the Y location, the width and the height. So instead of just using those default values, they don't mean anything. The computer doesn't know what Y means. So for the picture, we're going to write get image Minecraft slash slime, just like I remembered from this tab over here. It's important to know that you do not put a semicolon here. The semicolon goes at the end of the code. If you wanted to declare your image in a variable like var slime, equals then you can just copy this exactly get image minecraft slime and the semicolon will be appropriate because it's in the end of the line then right here you can go slime as the image or this is the picture parameter but all that doesn't matter because we still need an x and y location and a width and the height of the image so i'm going to put it at position 200 so it's approximately in the middle i'm going to put it at position 50 so it's up high I'm going to give it a width and height of 100. And let's see how that works. Oh, cute. I think it should be a little further to the left. So I can go ahead and change that, 150. There we go. I put a slime on my grass block, and I can mark this as complete. Last challenge is to turn the grass block into a different type of block. Uh, this is mostly to experiment with fill. You could, in theory, load in an image over top of the grass block and just be like, look, it's an end portal. That's valid. You can do that. That will earn you a success on that challenge. Uh, another thing you can do is just change the fill so it looks different. A lot of people I see will just make the top part white and turn it into a snow block. And I think that looks pretty neat. Uh, let me fill, change the last fill for that. Um, when I did this challenge, I decided to be kind of a troll and make it obsidian and just make it all black. Just get rid of all those fills. <laughs> there we go, it's an obsidian block and I just think that's kind of funny and very lazy. But I did it. It's a different type of block now. And that's how you do Minecraft grass block and all its challenges. It's really not that complicated. It's just a matter of actually knowing what lines of code do the things you want it to do. So thank you very much for watching and I hope it was helpful for you and happy coding.